All right. Uh, hello. I'm Alex Dupuy from Verdant Vibes, and I am here with composer, performer, and artist Patricia Martinez, uh, whose electric guitar piece, C'est L'Amour, is going to be on our concert this Saturday, played by myself. So, uh, first question, Patricia, can you give us a bit of background about C'est L'Amour uh, and also its title? Yes, hello, Alex. Uh, first of all, thank you for this invitation and for including my piece in this uh, season of Bird and Vibes. I am really happy about that because I I also, they perform and also at previous piece that you also perform at my previous piece and I, I am really happy with this. Uh, so about your question uh, about this piece for electric guitar, it's a, it's a piece uh, that I wrote in 2000. 18, so a few years ago. Um, the title is because uh, the idea, the central idea of this piece was working with a, with a concept of the psychoanalysis that uh, I, I also made the, the, the quotation on the score because uh, for Lacan, uh, he, one time he said, uh, the psychoanalyst, C'est l'amour, in French, no? The psychoanalysis is love. And uh, for me, was that's, that was very inspiring because uh, uh, electric guitar, when I decided to, to do this piece, because in fact, it was not my decision because it was uh, uh, commissioned by a composition course in Darmstadt. And it was for electric guitar in, in particular, uh, was a, a concert curated by Jaron Dutch. And the, the first thing that I, I think when I always think about electric guitar is that it's maybe the symbol of the music in popular music and for young people, uh, for many musicians, because in my impression, maybe it's the most performer instrument uh, everywhere but uh, I will I want to reflect about that in another uh, more maybe internal way and to try to to look into the relationship between the performer and the instrument and how this relationship is growing and is working maybe with uh, sometimes with reasons that even we don't understand. So um, that was a, a little bit my intention to to work with this piece. It's, it's about how is working this sometimes uh, some somehow in a kind of seductive relationship and another uh, in another way also kind of uh, I don't know very very intimate and very uh, related to their own desires and wishes and aspirations in life, because it's an instrument that also is a symbolic uh, element of uh, how a lot of you, young people wants to do in life, not just a rock star or something like that. Yes. Yeah. And, and um, in, in learning this piece, um, I found myself uh, thinking because because the piece has um, it's very gestural and has a lot of um, to me mo movements that are um, specific to electric guitar playing uh, that, that that just uh, in, in a way as a guitarist almost feel very personal um, and as guitarists uh, I feel like we often celebrate idiosyncrasies of the iconic players that we look to in terms of uh, you know how they move with the guitar or the techniques they use. And so I was wondering, uh, when you were writing um, both how you think about writing for electric guitar um, and also whether you have any particular um, electric guitarists that are uh, inspirations to you when you're writing. Yes, um, uh, I don't have a inspiration, <laughs> yes, of a particular performer, but <laughs> I I I was like involved in this kind of um, I don't know how to say, but all this 
over impressions around the electric guitar, over, I don't know, the glamour, I don't know how to express. But that was very something that I want to explore. And when you say about the gest the gestuality or the movements, I I am not thinking about that as a separate thing. I am thinking that as a complementary extended part of music. It's something that has to be connected. It's not it's not something strange that it had to just something like without meaning really it, it has to it, it could be or not but in this case it's, it's necessary to complete the idea in, i think this is my intention yes no that, that makes a, a lot of sense to me um like uh you know, for myself like um growing up and listening to guitar i found that like a lot of famous guitarists in a certain way didn't really make sense to me until i saw videos of them and you know doing their particular uh sort of rock star moves and then yes. i was like oh <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um and 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 this brings me to my next question a little bit um so more generally um looking at uh the larger body of work um that you've done uh many of your pieces are very much multimedia performances where um you've got um, the music, as, but you also have lighting and video and uh, choreography. And so I was wondering if you could talk about uh, who or what are your inspirations for creating uh, this kind of multimedia work? Yes. Um, first of all, I don't call that multimedia because for me, when, when we think about multimedia, we are thinking about different things that they are together. And in my case, um, music is the central point. It's not something that is just, okay, this is um, something that you can add with this, with this, with this, and maybe music is something like, you know, not very important level, no? Mm. Uh, I think music is the central part, but the thing is, what is the concept of music that I want to express in my works? And for me, it's something that is more expanded and more extended than just the acoustic part. Because the, the reality is that we are when we are experiencing a concert or a performance, we are including all our sense. We are, we are looking at the things not just with our ears, but also with our eyes and I don't know. The, the thing is, uh, in, in fact, the most important for me is to follow the needs of each project. So what the, the work needs is not something that I want to add uh, because of an, uh, an a priori intention, because I try to be really honest with, with the, the work itself. I, I don't think that I, I am only the the owner, because I, I think that when we create, we also create with with culture and with also with some something that are transversal to our own imaginary. It's not just us; it's, it's something more. I think, and mm. we it's, it's good to be uh, to really to really know that this is that is not this to to know so. I don't. I, I. I don't. I don't find the exact word in English, but this is the idea that I want to express. I don't know if it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, so, uh, moving on to the the pandemic portion of the interview, uh, how has uh, your life been um, as a composer this past year? Yes, the scene is. In particular, in my life, I am in I am going through a very particular part of my life because I am also in a health treatment, and this pandemic also was, in a way, I know it's something very difficult, and I also wanted that it finished as soon as possible because it's very very critical. But in a way, it's um. It's something that is accompanying me in this journey because it's, I cannot do anything, all things that I wanted to do in case everything it will be great. Um, it's something a little bit uh, comforting 
my soul a little bit in in this kind of uh, humanity trying to I think it's it's uh, also, of course there is very very sad the the, the great deaths and the people dying and, and and this problem with the vaccines that they are not going really faster as we need but I think in another way it's a, it's an of course it's a it's a it's an opportunity to explore as a humanity, other ways of how to really help other people, how to really be with ourselves without many, many distractions, and how to change our concept of society. I think it's because we, we are here as a, because we, are, we have a lot of problems before. It's not just one day that's just happened. So we didn't do anything, very things that we had to do. And that is also how to, accept you see yeah yeah and um for our last question um what is uh, most exciting to you as an artist right now yeah I think most exciting for me is things that they they cannot happen with this situation because we are all virtual now we are all we have to need to have to be distance and it's difficult because I don't know maybe we have to adapt our dreams to the new situation but I don't know I, I like very much for example to to work on on full length projects because I like the situation that people can be really immersive in a piece and also can when when you have this kind of uh, full end project and also for uh, different performers, different voices. I, I like to really to, uh, I, I need this maximization of elements because I think it's the way that I want to express my my ideas and what I want to do in, in my art. Um, and also a way to connect with people and to connect with the art, with audience. Because the, the concert format for me is something that is, is a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, like a J, something like that, because it's, it's, you have to, as a, as a public, you have to change your mind each 10 minutes, each 10, 15 minutes, because it's, it's not possible to really create something that you, you can be inside of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to get this. Uh, for me, that is very important. It, also, another important thing is how to change the the for example the, the the current situation when big theaters are, are are going on because new music and contemporary music uh, it's like uh, they are something very foreign or things that they are outsider and they are not really uh, part of the the program the seasons of the theaters and the opera theaters and that that we need to change that because uh, also as a female composer, this is another very big question, no? The how to visibilize our, our work and our art, no? Yeah. I, I don't know what it's been like for you, but for me, it just the thought of being able to get back towards um, live performance at all is just kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, of course. Oh. Of course, we we cannot change. You cannot think about anything because the the most simple thing now is very difficult, and yeah. we don't know. No. Uh. <laughs> well, um, that is uh, all for right now. But um, thank you so much, Patricia, for talking with us, uh, and we are looking forward to Saturday. Thank you very much, Alex, and I hope it will be a very great concert. I am happy that Bird and Vice will do this.